Hello, and welcome to a video for Grade 12 Essential Math on the properties of polygons. A polygon is any shape with straight sides, however many sides you'd like. A triangle is the smallest polygon that you can close off. You could have as many sides as you would like in a polygon, and all of these properties would still work. In fact, all of these properties work for triangles as well as quadrilaterals. Now, one thing to note, when we're talking about polygons for this part, we're going to be using regular polygons. A regular polygon is a polygon that has this exact same length for all of its sides and the same angles for all of its angles. So an equilateral triangle is a regular triangle. All three sides are the same, all three angles are the same. A square is a regular quadrilateral. All four sides are the same, all four angles are the same. As we go through all of these polygons, for this video, we're looking at regular polygons and the properties thereof. So let's take a look at the parts of a polygon first off. So in this case, we are looking at the interior angle of a regular hexagon. A hexagon has six sides to it. We know that the sides of, are the flat parts of this polygon. And the angles, the interior or internal angles, you'll see those terms used somewhat interchangeably. Interior angles are the angles on the inside between two sides. In this case, this is the interior angle. One of the useful properties of a polygon is that if we know how many sides there are, we can figure out all of the angles or how much the angles add up to. We have a nice formula here for the sum of the interior angles. So the sum of the interior angles here is we go 180 degrees times the number of sides minus 2. n is the number of sides in all of these formulas. This works out really nicely for us. This formula is really straightforward. We'll look at a couple examples in a second. For a polygon, if we look at that interior angle, we can also find an exterior angle by figuring out, by extending one of the sides and figuring out the angle with the next side. You may notice that the interior and the exterior angle add up to 180 degrees, and that is a really useful uh, property for us. Another way of thinking about this is if I park this hexagon on a flat surface, what sort of wedge do I need to prop it up there so that it doesn't roll over? So that's the exterior angle. Now with the exterior angle, we also have a nice formula for us where we say we just take 180 degrees minus the interior angle. The interior angle we found out with our previous formula. Another proper part of the polygon that we have is we have a central angle. The central angle is like if we cut this polygon into a pie, or uh, like we would a pie, what is the angle of each slice of pie? So we connect across through the center and we find the central angle there. Which is really important to note is that the central angles, if you add up all of them, it will equal 360 degrees. Which gives us this formula, so to find the central angle we take 360 degrees, divide it by n, or the number of sides. We can also have diagonals. Now diagonals is possibly the trickiest one here because you have to draw a lot of them. In the case of this hexagon, we have a lot of diagonals because you're connecting every corner to every other corner. Each corner is already connected to two by the sides, so in this case you may notice that each corner has three diagonals coming off of it. It is important to double check your counting here, as you want to make sure that you're not double counting these uh, diagonals as you go through this. However, we have a nice formula which actually allows us to calculate the number of diagonals really easily. So we take the number of diagonals, or n, times n minus 3 divided by 2. That's a nice quick formula that works really well for us, especially for larger uh, quadrilateral, sorry, larger 
polygons here where it's not necessarily super easy to figure out what the answer is just by looking at or counting because uh, sometimes you end up with a lot of diagonals. So let's take a look at an example. Here we've got a question that says, what is the number of diagonals in a regular dodecagon? This is a 12-sided shape. If you'd like, you can draw your 12-sided shape, draw all the diagonals and count it. That's going to be a real pain because you're going to have a lot of diagonals to draw there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the formula instead. My formula is n times n minus 3 divided by 2. Plugging this in, I've got 12 times 12 minus 3 divided by 2. Make sure you're doing your bed mass correctly. So I'm going to do 12 times 12 minus 3 is 9 divided by 2. 12 times 9 divided by 2, and you can do this in your calculator, is going to work out to 54 diagonals. In this case, our regular dodecagon has 54 diagonals, and I don't want to draw all of them. So this formula works out really nicely for us. We just plug them in and go. And in this case, we're looking for the number of diagonals. So we make sure we have that formula. That formula should be on your study sheet and it should be on the formula sheet for you. So you can use that one. So let's take a look at another example here. When we're looking at the properties of polygons, we also have central angles and we also have internal angles that we can take a look at. So with these, let's look at this example. I've got this regular octagon, which looks like a stop sign. An octagon has eight sides. So with this octagon, we're saying, what's the measure of one of the central angles? Here I'm looking central angles. That's going to tell me which formula I'm going to use. I want one central angle, 360 divided by N. I'm going to do 360 divided by eight which works out to 45 degrees. If I look at this octagon here, that's the central angle there. So that is 45 degrees. Each of these central angles here is also 45 degrees. This also asks us to calculate the measure of angle Y in our triangle here. We have two ways that we could do this. There's two nifty ways that we could do this. I'm going to show you through both of these. The first way, I look at this and I go, well, angle Y here is half of my interior angle. So this here is the whole interior angle. So if I find that, I can cut it in half. All right. So to find my interior angle, I'm going to go use the 180 times n minus 2. That's my formula. So I'm going to do 180 times 8 minus 2. 8 minus 2 is 6. 180 minus 6. And um, I'm sorry, 180 times 6 is 1080. I need to find one of these interior angles. So I'm going to take that 1080 divided by 8, because I know there's 8 of them, and that gets me 135 degrees. That's the whole interior angle. I need half of that to find angle Y. So I can cut that in half, 135 divided by 2, and I get 67.5 degrees. There's one way to solve this. Uh, the 67.50 degrees should be. In this case, I can also look back at this and realize this here is an isosceles triangle. So I have a nice little chunk here. That's a fun little isosceles triangle, and I'm looking for one of the base angles. So if I draw that out here, 
There's my isosceles triangle. I know that this here is a central angle, so that's 45 degrees. I figured that out in part A. And I know that these two here are the same because this is an isosceles triangle. So what I can also do is go, well, 180 minus 45 works out to 135 degrees. These two angles here must add up to 135 degrees. So I can do 135 divided by 2 gets me 67.5 degrees. So there's my answer in another way. Both of these methods work great depending on how you recognize this. Do you recognize that this is an interior angle here and I want half of it? Or do you recognize that I have an isosceles triangle and I want one of the base angles of that? Both of these work great and you're combining a couple of different properties of polygons that you know here. Have a great day.